Hi, and welcome to another episode of Proven Performance. I'm Dr. Karina Tobin, Head of Nutrition and Education at Optimum Nutrition. As always, we will be hoping to explore everything nutrition, performance, and wellness related by cutting through all of the pseudoscience to provide you with evidence-based information on these podcasts. This week's guest is the London fitness guy, James Sterling. James. Hello, we're here. We are here, aka the London fitness guy. Yeah, almost didn't make it. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, we were quite was, worried actually. I was panicking for a little bit there. I was just saying, it was the irony of doing an Instagram message about slowing down and then I'm racing over here within the speed limit to get here on time, well, almost not quite, but close. Don't worry. We'd we'll wait around for you, James. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So you are, at the moment, the most successful PT in the UK. One of the most. Um, uh, 100%. I, and you've I, exploded I, on social media. Yeah, well, I mean, on face value. It depends how you, how you define success. My Take growth on social. <laughs> Take the compliment. My growth on social has been really good, but... Um, and it's been a really exciting couple of years of growth and me kind of learning about what I want to deliver as a PT and what I want to help people achieve. Um, but you know, my my goal is to get as many people improving their health and fitness as I can. I'm not there yet mm. on what I want to deliver. So I've got a long way to go, but I'm, I'm getting there one person at a time. <laughs> Good ethos. So like you've had a, I suppose, a bit of a different journey in that you've come from sports science. Like, yep. h- how did you, I suppose, make the transition from sports science to PT? And then how did you figure out what, what your niche was? Because you're really, you know, anytime I hear you or listen to you, you have more kind of a holistic, um, more approachable um, attitude towards fitness. So I suppose, how did your journey get yeah. you to there? You know what, I've had the most crazy kind of weird journey from finishing uni I actually I went to uni knowing I wanted to do something in sport and I did sports science and then um, when I finished uni I just kind of I always saw myself working in a big office and that's always what I actually wanted to do I wanted to be like the chief exec of a a football club or something on those lines Um, and then I did a grad scheme and ended up managing a leisure center for a while it wasn't quite this chief exec of a football club but um, for me that was kind of getting my uh, the foot in the door of a a big organization and, and learning some key skills but um, I then went to work for um, Badminton England, which is really niche. Um, but I was basically trying to get as many people playing badminton as possible because it's actually one of the, the biggest racket sports in the UK. Which wow. is Yeah, everyone always says that. Actually, everyone always says, oh, do you play badminton? And I never play, play badminton. I'm not good at badminton. Um, but then from there, I went to work for Fulham Football Club and I was working um, kind of with the Premier League um, in helping kids um, from the age of about 11 up to 25 um, really kind of find purpose in themselves through football. Um, And I was actually, it was an amazing job. I absolutely loved it. Not many people really kind of know about this, Um, but I was working with kids from the estates across London who were involved in gangs, um, drug dealing, all that sort of stuff, um, and helping them get out of the gangs and, and use football as a kind of a tool for empowering them and building self-esteem and confidence so that was my a job I absolutely loved and I would probably still be doing it to be fair if I wasn't now PTing but um, you know I had an opportunity I wanted to to pursue my own business and as a PT and then I left and I've never looked back really wow yeah um that's that is so unique to you yeah it's weird right yeah (laughs) it is yeah and you know when you finished um sports science do you feel that that gave you enough of a grounding to become a pt or did you go on and do a little bit more like to have you more Mm. qualifications in um strength training or different types of training yeah well I, i actually like the business side of sport and that's kind of more i guess the route i was going to obviously we had to do kind of modules in biomechanics and, yeah. and you know, anatomy physiology and that sort of stuff and it definitely gave me a grounding and understanding to do pt now um but you know like at the end of the day 90 percent of people don't need to be able to do a single leg box jump and you know all these sorts of things you might do in sport um and i guess in that side of it i don't really use to train the everyday person who wants to improve their health and fitness so was it always then about you know from the time that you i suppose you know were working with badminton to uh fulham football club it's been all about getting as many people 
to play sport or participate in sport. Yeah. So it's that kind of a- and ethos. and the benefits. Yeah, and the benefits of sport. I, I'm a massive believer that if you play sport, if you exercise, if you go to the gym, whatever you enjoy doing and you do it, um, I, I'm a big believer that that makes you feel great. And I think for me, I, I've seen firsthand the power of being involved in a sports club or with a team and that kind of community ethos. And I've seen how powerful that is for, for some of the hardest hitting people in the country. So, you know, I, I've seen it on, on that scale. So, you know, I can, I can only um, emphasize how good it is for someone who f- already feels great to feel even better about themselves through exercising. And that's why I'm really passionate about getting more people exercising regularly and, and feeling and seeing the benefits of it. So when did you kind of have that light bulb moment around like, you know, getting yourself and your brand out of the gym because that's kind of what you've done with your app and your online community how did that transpire Mm, I I think for me I really started to think about who I wanted to help and or who I wanted to work with and you know for me it wasn't really about getting Joe Bloggs who's already uh, 12% body fat down to 6% body fat it was more about helping the person who sat on the sofa thinking where do I start with this? How do I get off the sofa and into some sort of exercise and then build the confidence and then take it to the gym? It's it's quite a, I mean, it's a big market group because there are loads of people that sit within that kind of bracket. But also it's a really challenged one because, you know, there aren't many people, um, aside from a few obvious ones, that kind of do work in that ground and try and educate people around progressing on their journey from on the couch to in the gym, I guess. And we've just come through January. Yeah. You've had a big birthday. It's been a long month. Yeah, <laughs> a long month and a big birthday. Yeah, the big 3-0. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, do you fi- do you find that, you know, there is this usual scurry to the gym or scurry to get exercise goals? Um, I suppose people try to get their exercise goals on point for January. Um, and then do you feel like it c- tails off or to your method because you want to have some you know sustainable more like work with your lifestyle do you find that the people who come and train with you or train with you online are they they tend to stick to their exercise plan or Mm. their goals you know what it's it's been it's been a really good january in terms of people um downloading the app people working through the workouts i mean the last thing i want is people downloading an app and not using the workouts and it does happen you know it's inevitable you're going to get people that download and don't actually start the workouts and for me my main thing when I launched that online business was to make sure that at least 70 to 75 percent of people download the app and then work through the program that's always been my priority Um, it's not just about selling a platform to people it's about getting them working through it and I believe that you know 12 weeks is the time scale it takes to create a habit um, and if I get those people through 12 weeks, it's very unlikely they're going to slip back into a routine of doing nothing. Um, so for me, when I started January, I said to myself, right, I, I'm going to take on a handful of people from an online perspective and I'm going to get these people from A to B in 12 weeks and get some of these people who aren't exercising regularly, exercising regularly. And that was my primary goal from, on, from an online perspective. Well, that's a, a hugely high st- stat to get 75% of people through it. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. it's very tough. But it's a it's a great goal for you to have. Yeah, I say I say it's not about just selling to the masses. It's about working closely with people and really kind of trying to educate them so they have knowledge and a fitness level at the end of it to carry on and, and take it one step further. And it's life changing for those people. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I absolutely love it. And I, al- I always say across my Instagram and my you know, stories and stuff that for me it is the most rewarding thing seeing someone firstly love exercising again when they perhaps haven't done so before um to, for them to see strength gains improvements in their fitness each week um and to and to start feeling better actually the majority of people who finish the 12 weeks say you know what i'm i feel like a different person and for me that is the most rewarding thing that i can i can get out of uh, working with on, as on an, from an online perspective and where does nutrition fall into it i know that you know, your programs, they do um, have a nutrition element. I suppose, how important do you feel that nutrition is to support all of these clients? It's a very good question. And it feels like it's going to feel like we've kind of pre-planned this now. Um, but for me, nutrition is, there's a massive gap in in the industry from a nutrition perspective for PTs. Um, you know, obviously the obstetrician course is, is helping fill some of those gaps. 
Um, but for me, I, I, I didn't want it to be delivering nutrition knowledge, I guess, that I wasn't trained in. Um, so I partnered with a nutritionist um, and, and they, they offer um, a, a nutrition element to the program as well. So clients can track their foods, learn about how to kind of balance their lifestyle um, you know, so if they want to go out on a Saturday, what, you know, what that means for the rest of the week. Um, and, and it's like, it's very kind of holistic view. Um, but it does teach them how to balance their plate, um, understand what foods they're eating and really how to kind of cal- cal- calculate their macros and work with them. Mm. I think that's the most important thing, no more than the exercise, you know, that you teach people needs to be sustainable and work throughout people's lifestyle. If nutrition's not the same, well, then people are just going to not bother to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I with, with the nutrition program, we ask people to do a three day um, food diary so we can get an idea of what they're eating over those three days. And then we do a checkup um, every month for three months throughout the 12 weeks to make sure they are progressing with their diet. And most importantly, understand why they're progressing with their diet so they can carry that information forward um, beyond the 12 weeks. Yeah. So do you think that when PTs come out of you know, their PT course, that they, there is a gap and that they should go on if they're not going to partner with a nutritionist? Um, I guess it's more about the knowledge the PT wants to give to their clients, you know, because, um, you know, I, I learned a lot about nutrition myself. I might, I might have the certificate to, to back it up, but I, I learned a lot about nutrition myself and how to, you know, calculate macros or, or you know, understand different food groups. So I think the basic knowledge that also you do get from the qualification is enough to provide that that element but I think it's more a case, you know, a lot of clients now will want food plans or um, a very kind of strict plan of what they should and shouldn't eat. And for me, it's very difficult to give that, A, because I, I don't feel that we should be giving that because it's too regimented of, you know, chicken and broccoli seven times a week. No one really wants that. Um, and I think the education piece is far more important for them to understand. So it's, it's a sustainable approach. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think as well, we're so influenced by the media and the media have, they they jump onto so many myths that even though sometimes you are trained, you kind of second guess yourself. Yeah. You know, even around the insulin stuff, you start to second guess yourself when you're not actually reading the research all the time. Mm-hmm. And obviously nobody has time to read the research all the yeah. time. So again, you start to second guess yourself and then it's easy for people to slip into actually, yeah, you know, you shouldn't eat carbs or, you know, yeah. you, you you should eat fat or, you know, whatever the, the myth is. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good to have, um, I suppose, a nutritionist that you can turn to or someone um, that you can turn to who is a, an expert in mm-hmm. that area. Um, and I'm sure it brings a lot of credibility to you um, know for your clients to know that you have nutrition yeah. knowledge, but you also, you know, have an expert yeah. that you can turn um, to. I mean, for me, I, I, with the app and with the program, I want it to be the best and I want it to be the best value. And, you know, I want to carry on working with people um, directly. And, you know, I message everyone on a Friday and kind of do a check in with them, see how they're getting on. And I love that element of it. Um, I'm really impressed by that element, by the way. Yeah, I mean, you, you individually, you know, it's not like, you know, some intern or it's you actually who is giving the clients feedback. And I think that's pretty like that's a testament to your commitment to them. to the program. I mean, it has its challenges because it does limit the amount of people you can work with. And I think that's the biggest drawback for me is I'm at a point now where I'm thinking, okay, well, this is great. I'm getting brilliant results with people I work with. But, you know, if I want to scale this up now, I, I don't have the hours in the in the day to sit there and message absolutely everyone at the moment. I can. Um, but there will be a point where I, I guess I need to look at um, how I manage that and make it more accessible to more people across the globe to work with. Um, yeah. We kind of digress the nutrition part there. But as I was saying, I, I, I want to be able to offer the best service. And my my service at the moment isn't, isn't in nutrition. So it, it was a no brainer for me to partner with um, someone who is more qualified than me to deliver excellence, I guess. Yeah. Um, so what's your day to day? You know, are you still in the gym? Are you explain to me yeah. about your day to day? Because yeah. I'm really curious. Yeah. Like, how do you juggle all the balls or? Um, well, I, I get up about six o'clock maybe half five six and then most days i'll go to the gym about half six or half seven and train myself I, for me I, I love getting my workout out, out the way and done um you know i used to be able to train anytime you know in the evenings you know lunchtime whenever it was i used to be really good at being able to do that and i used to kind of say to myself like why are people struggling with this 
But nowadays, maybe because I've hit 30, I don't know, you know, a couple of days you older. Said it, you know? me. You yeah. said it, not um, me. I just, it gets to after midday and I'm just like, nah, it's not going to happen. I just can't be bothered. And you know, I think this actually it's quite refreshing as a, for someone to hear a PT say that because everyone has this idea that PTs are the most motivated people, but they go through the same struggles as everybody else. Like, yes, they have a passion for it, but they st- like some days people will go in there and be like, no, nah, it's not going to happen today and walk out. Um, so I'll, I'll get it done first thing in the morning, get it out of the way. So I've got the whole day to focus on work and clients. And um, I take about 10 classes a week across London. I do... Um, about 15 to 20 hours PT. Um, okay. And then the rest of my time is is focused on um, social media work or um, the app. Okay. It's, it, it's a bit of a, it's, it's tough at the moment um, because literally my week is divided into thirds almost of stuff to do. And, you know, there are m- most weekends I'll be doing something and my days are very long at the moment. But, um, you know, there is a, end goal in sight and I'm, I'm getting better at balancing stuff I guess um because you must have to be really organized like even for oh the God, amount my of organization like, is not good <laughs> we know that after today yeah James. exactly yeah <laughs> exactly but even to put out you know the amount of content you do on Instagram mm-hmm. like that's a very uh difficult yeah. uh, thing to do like yeah. one post can take up mm. a lot of time particularly when you're recording mm. so do you like record in blocks no no, okay. I actually don't at the moment. Um, I have done before and it, to be fair, it was really effective. But at the moment, I I know roughly how my week's going to... I say I'm not organised, but most I'm just not organised on paper. It's all I, I, in my head. I know what my plan is for the week. I know what I'm doing. Um, but for me, I will generally allocate an hour in my day to film a workout and then I will share that workout on on social media. It's always at the same time that I post it. So I always make sure I allocate that hour before my posting time. Um, but, you know, I... I have an idea of what workouts I want to deliver. I talk to the, my audience a lot so I, so I can ask them, you know, what workouts do you want to see and kind of gauge it and, and let them kind of direct my my social media strategy, I guess, and and deliver the content they, they want to see. My, my Instagram is not about me most of the time. It's about delivering content for the audience who want to use it. So they make it easier mm. for me, I think. Who's your audience? Um, typically, I guess people who want to improve their fitness or are at a point now where they're going, oh, I feel pretty good now. Um, what's the next chapter for me? Um, people who want accessible workouts, people who are at home with kids and they can't get to the gym, um, you know, people who work and travel, as a lot of people that travel with work, and they will go and do um, one of my workouts in the hotel. And, you know, I like to think it's people like me, to be honest. That's what, in my head, it's people who are exactly the same as me who aren't obsessed with fitness but are passionate about it and know they want to make a difference to their own health and then, um, I guess, use my workouts to get there. But you're probably slightly more passionate than a lot of us about fitness. I'm committed, yeah. And I'm passionate about, I'm passionate, I'm more passionate about getting other people results than I am myself. I mean, I don't think my body has changed or my fitness has changed for two years. Um, but I'm really happy with that because I, I live a life I really enjoy. I feel good. Um, and, you know, I, I get to help other people achieve the same goal. And, you know, if you say to people, oh, okay, I can get you feeling great and you can set that for a couple of years, people will bite your hand off to, to get there, you know. Um, so that's 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 my kind of philosophy at the moment is I'm happy staying fit and healthy and enjoying my job every day. I, I, I genuinely never get up in the morning. And I feel like, oh, God, I don't want to go to work. I know it's really cliche because you hear people say that, but it genuinely never, never happens. Yeah. And like, that's amazing. I mean, that's what everyone strives for. Mm. You know, some to wake up in the morning and be like, yeah, it's another day. Yeah. I get to really you get to change people's lives, which is pretty. Yeah. Good. And I, I mean, you have days where you're tired and you have days where you wake up and you're like, oh, God. But I never think. God, I've got to go and work. It's always just, God, I feel a bit tired, right? Have a shower, have a coffee, get on with it, you know? Like it's mm. it's never a burden to be getting up to work, which, yeah. you know, I, again, I don't want to sound really cliche and cheesy, but I genuinely do mean that. That's, yeah. that's honest truth. But maybe that's why you're so relatable to people as well, because you were just a genuine guy who is passionate about fitness, but has all the other challenges that everybody mm. else does. So your followers are like, James is a pretty normal yeah, uh, guy. yeah, it probably is. Yeah, you know, like I, I'm not going to the gym and doing you know, <laughs> Olympic movements with the bars. You know, I just it's not really me. I just wanna, I just wanna feel as good as I can and 
but actually probably the same as most people feel as good as you can and do as little as you need to I guess yeah. <laughs> that's probably the yeah, way most people want to work yeah. it right but I thought it was really cool as well the way you did you know your the holiday workout the 14 yeah. days I thought that was really good because when you go on holidays well when I go on holidays mm-hmm. um, you, you do want to you want to have a break but you also want to keep kind of a level yeah. of training so you can eat and drink yeah, a little bit extra exactly. but not come home and have a mammoth task ahead of you yeah. that you have to lose like five pounds or whatever yeah. it is so I thought it was really good how you positioned that mm. um you can do it from anywhere the pictures also helped James yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nice background settings but yeah it was again it's your ethos of like yeah you know put it into your lifestyle be sustainable well you know what I mean people say don't they like oh god when you go on holiday why do people want to work out but actually for me most of the time it's not even a case of like trying to offset weight gain or anything like that I just I just I feel I feel so much better from getting my workout done and, and me and my training partner we always say to everyone finish session like god like, you know it gives you such clarity for the day ahead and I know again it's probably as you get older but you you do start to really value that and like being able to think clearly and kind of relieve stress is is hugely important for me mm. Uh, I went away for Christmas this year um, with my family and my parents and people were like, oh, how'd you get on? Where were we? And I was like, it was perfect. We had a lovely villa. There was a gym down the road and everyone was like, what? Yeah, exactly. I meant like, how much did you eat and drink? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, it was just that feeling of like, yeah. you are kind of doing nothing yeah. all day long on and holidays. I, I find it motivational. Yeah. I, I, when I get on holiday, and like, you know, if you're, especially if you're away somewhere hot, I mean, you get up, you walk, I, I, walk, I walk to the gym in the morning. I'm like, Oh, this is amazing you know I, I walk to London it's a horrible weather and here I can get up and go and enjoy it with, with no time constraints I can just go and do my session as I please to in the time I want to do it in go and have a buffet breakfast um, and then go and enjoy a day I mean that for me that's like the perfect holiday setup for me yeah no absolutely you can come on holidays with me anytime yeah let's do it yeah where are we going <laughs> yeah you can book it in and we'll go <laughs> yeah. done um so let's change tack for a second. So obviously, uh, there's a lot of PTs, a lot of f- fitness professionals that listen. Um, so for them, particularly the younger ones who are coming out and, you know, just, I suppose, getting used to that whole gym setting. And then they're looking at people like you and they're wondering, is it all online? Like, is it all going online? And should they be thinking that way? Or does the gym mm-hmm. have an important or as an important place yeah, yeah. online is a different ball game mm. um and you know i used to look at what people were doing online and think oh that seems all right but it is a, a different ball game it's a different business um and part of the reason i never want to stop pt is because i, I don't e- ever want to lose touch of working one-to-one with people so i can take that and put it online um but it is so different to being on the gym for programming sessions um from every every aspect of it from selling a program to programming the program um, and then to working with people through the program. Every part, I mean, I've been doing it now just about what a year and a half. And I feel like last year I was just scratching the surface of really getting to where I want to get with it. Um, and you learn so quickly, like it, it, with any job you do as, you know, as a self-employed person where you're responsible for everything, but you learn so quickly about the do's and don'ts. And you know, I am always very methodical with how I launch a program. I make sure it works. I, I run through every every workout myself to make sure that I know you can get it done within an hour and that sort of thing. And these are all the considerations you have to make. You know, you can't, when you're one-to-one with someone in the gym, if you're running a little bit over, you can scale it back a little bit. Or if, you know, your client turns up late, you can scale it back. But, you know, when you're, when you're programming for a person to do, go into the gym and do it, you know, they, they want to be able to get in there, get it done within the hour and then go to work. So, mm. you know, every aspect of online is so different to working one to one. OK. Do you think like being on the gym floor for a lot of PTs is a really important learning curve? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I I wouldn't feel comfortable programming, you know, 85 workouts for people that I didn't know worked or didn't know were enjoyable mm. um, or didn't have a structure behind them. I mean, the way I, I program for the 12 weeks is I take people through different phases of training, where it be um, endurance training, um, strength training, you know, cardiovascular training, I ta- or take them through a 12 week journey. They might not necessarily realize they are, but that they are. And we have testing weeks and all these sorts of things that I know work because I've used them for the last you know three, four years with, with people on, every day on the gym floor. 
Okay. And do you think like that most PTs automatically now think, you know, okay, I'm qualified as PT, I can go online? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you see, I mean, people like Joe Wicks, you know, James Smith, or really successful guys. And, you know, I look at them, and I'm like, oh, God, I, they're living the dream, you know, like, that's, that's what I want to do. And, you know, they're, they're living the dream, because they've invested the time into doing it. And, you know, spent those years getting to that point. Um, you know, so I, I've looked, I've researched and looked for everything to get my online point where I want it to be. But in a way, like, you've got to find your own space online and for me that space i've created i feel like i've created a slightly different space mm. for people um you know i make sure i give everyone body weight programs and gym programs so that if they go on holiday or if they're at work they can they have the flexibility to flip between the two um you know someone in those 12 weeks could do a workout every single day if they wanted to i mean they, they wouldn't do that but they could do a workout every day and for me that is the value added that i offer them yeah um, it's interesting that fitness has exploded. I mean, I feel that too in Ireland. It has exploded. We've never had as many PTs, nutritionists, people working in the industry. Are we making a dent in, I suppose, what is the obesity crisis? Are we actually getting people, you know, to burn more calories? Are we getting them to live a, a healthier lifestyle? I think we're making it easier for people to understand. Um, and I think that is... I mean, before you make any change, there's got to be an element of understanding behind how to do it. And, you know, like like you said earlier, with all these different ideas of insulin resistance or, you know, cycling carbohydrates or, you know, ketosis, all these different ideas, we're making it much easier for people to understand the very basics of fat loss or, um, or muscle gain for that matter. But we're making it very easier for them to understand what they need to do. And it's not a case of you know, having to read endless books about how to do it. And, you know, I mean, James Smith was on the other week and he, he, his work with, with calorie deficit has been testament to that, you know. Um, and I think as PTs, we, we are realizing that we have to make it easier for people to understand. And people are now more, uh, are getting re the, the, the um, uh, kind of knowledge more readily available to them. So yeah. I think it's that's, that's a, a huge movement. Um, but it's still down to the person to want to make the change. You can't force change on someone. You can't force a habit on someone. Um, they have to be at a point where they where they say, right, I'm ready to do this. Now I'm going to go. Mm. Um, so, you know, whether we are significantly reducing it where we want it to be, probably not. But we're, we're making good progress towards it, I feel. And do you think that, I suppose, people have a different attitude to PTs now? Obviously, you mentioned James Smith. You know, James Smith about talk, talks about, you know, how I suppose PTs were traditionally all about the bodybuilding, physique, um, and that they gave, I suppose, this industry a, a bad name to mm. some extent. Do you think that's changing? Do you um, think our vision of, you know, what's a good body or a healthy body is changing? You know what, like, I th I think people are perfectly within their rights to set their own goal, whether it be an aesthetic goal or whether it just be to improve their fitness. I I don't, I would, I won't look at someone and say, you know, God, I, you're training to get abs or anything like that. I'm not saying that anyone else does do that, but I personally wouldn't do that because I just don't feel it's down to me or, or anybody else to, to suggest what someone's goal should or shouldn't be. As long as they're doing it in a, in a healthy way, you know, they're not you know, limiting their food to 100 calories seven days a week to get there. I, I, I'm quite happy for <laughs> anyone to have their own goal and enjoy the process of getting to it. And I suppose that's the beauty of you being the London fitness guy. It's more about fitness um, and making a change from, as you say, it's the person who was on the couch mm -hmm. and not, they're not on the couch, which is a really nice place to be because it's not hugely about aesthetics. Mm, yeah. It's more about yeah. the holistic health. Yeah, and I think the way the messages you share uh, very much relate to the clients you get as a personal trainer. So none of my clients are are coming to me really and saying, right, in three weeks time, I want an eight pack. They're all pretty much saying, I want to look as good as I can, feel as good as I can, but still be able to go and enjoy a few drinks at the weekend. And that's how that is basically every client I work with. Is it you? Is, is it me? Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, I say my body hasn't changed in two years, but I love my life. And I, you know, I've, I've been in a really bad place with food before. 
Um, you know, I, I used to do a lot of like fitness model bodybuilding. Well, not bodybuilding because I'm never quite big enough for that. But, you know, I used to do that back in the day for years. And it took me three years to cycle out of that eating habit. And I, like, you know, there might be 90% or 99% of people that do that as well. that are absolutely fine. But I was mm. probably one of the 1% that did it in an unhealthy way and, and really struggled to get out of that cycle. I don't know if there's a healthy way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, Definitely uh, not sustainably yeah. anyway. But, you know, the, there are people that are in brilliant shape all the time and they do it. So, you know, I, I, some of my friends are in incredible shape and they, they can go out weekends as well. So, yeah, I suppose everyone's different. Yeah, there and, is. There you know, is. Yeah. I back mean, to your point. Who are we to tell them this yeah. should be your goal and this is how you should do yeah. it? Whatever works for them. They're the luckier people. Yeah. Uh, that maybe, yeah. you know, they know. Yeah. And I think as well, it's all about understanding your body. A lot of the people that, you know, you start to work with because this is new to them, the diet, the exercise, mm-hmm. particularly the exercise, um, they, I suppose, they don't know what to expect from their body. Yeah. Um, and it is all a, a huge change for them. And it's mm-hmm. more difficult for them because, well, they've never done it before. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I, what well, I, I think... As long as you enjoy what you do, you should never not enjoy it because that's that's going to keep you doing it for life. And as long as you enjoy what you do, um, as long as you feel good when you do it, and as long as you end your week feeling like that was a great week of exercise, uh, my diet was pretty good, I, f- I feel in a good place, then that for me is the ultimate winner. Do you have, like you talked about, you know, if, if the person isn't ready to commit... Um, and for me, you know, the mental side of things is so important because I definitely feel from a nutrition perspective that it is about habits and behavior. Um, do you have any of that type of element in the app or is it just kind of, do you refer to it or do you plan to? My, my app, I, what I always, I mean, when you buy the app, you don't have to pay a direct debit. You pay a one-off fee and I feel like I'm plugging it. I'm not, (laughs) um, but you know, the app is yours for life. So all those workouts, they don't expire. You have them for life. And that was what I always wanted to have with it because I want someone to be able to use those workouts, not just for the 12 weeks, but for the next six years after that or however long it might be. Um, and they can set their start date for support. And that was another really key thing for me because, you know, people might download it and then not do anything for two weeks and then think, think to themselves, actually, now, now I'm ready to go. And then they get 12 weeks of, of one-to-one support mm. when from the moment they decide that they want to start that workout. Okay. So for those people who are sitting on the couch and mm-hmm. who are wondering, okay, January has passed, I haven't gotten off the couch, what advice would you give them? Start with something small, um, something that is really achievable and, and measurable that you can kind of reward yourself for doing. Um, I know we always hear and, and I, I always say getting up and going for a half hour, 40 minute walk. You can put a measurable time scale on it and you can achieve it and you feel better for doing it. I think the, the moment you start to get into that cycle of feeling good about what you've just done, then it pushes you to do a little bit more. Um, so, you know, if you're doing a walk and you can go into a bodyweight workout, we always say, we always assume bodyweight workouts have to be hip workouts mm-hmm. and they don't, you know, like you can build strength with your body weight. Um, so go into a bodyweight workout and then once you build the confidence and esteem from there, then it's a great opportunity to pr- progress into a gym program. Okay. And what about for PTs, those that are starting? Is there any advice that you'd give a PT who is basically starting on a journey of, you know, being a PT mm-hmm. in a gym? Is there any advice that you would give them to make the most out mm-hmm. of what they're doing because for a lot of PTs obviously they have so many they're trying to do so many classes Mm -hmm. and so many um, clients to keep their head above water Mm -hmm. that they can feel like they're in a bit of a rat race yeah you know it, burnout is so big in the fitness industry and it's ironic isn't it like the fittest people it's really the fittest people are getting getting burnout but i think when i started i remember coming back and i would have done pt at 6 a.m 7 a.m 8 a.m classes at 12 p.m and 2 p.m and then back into evening classes at 6 and 7 and i remember the times i'd get home and i would look in the mirror and be like i look gray and um they got to a point where you know you can be making great money as a PT, but for me, having a life and enjoying every session you do is far more important. And, you know, I think you need to be able to deliver the energy to every client so they enjoy it because you, know, you can be the best PT in the world. But if your client's coming and hating the hour they have with you, um, then that's no good. So enjoy every session you do um, is my is my first tip. Um, be aware of how you feel at the end of the week and if you're kind of committing to too much or maybe if you can have capacity for a little bit more um, and, and just kind of be professional with your approach. You know, Make sure that you don't cancel on clients. Make sure you're there on time. Um, make sure that you're not coming in half asleep or hungover 
and you know i think that is the three tips that i can give really mm, good tips what's next for you james can um you tell us? <laughs> i've got a few things really um i uh sportswear is really big for me um I uh, am passionate about sportswear, um, so I'll leave that one there. Okay, very uh, good. We're intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make the app um, as accessible as possible. Um, so, you know, next month we move into a different, slightly tiered system of the app, so it can hopefully reach more people um, and Im- improve that service even more. Um, and really just to carry on enjoying what I'm doing and ride the wave of it, I guess. Like, who knows when and the whole Instagram thing is going to blow and you know, I'm, I'm just, in, I'm enjoying, I enjoy putting content out daily and I think that's a huge thing because I don't think many people actually do enjoy doing that at times, but I love doing it. I love engaging with the audience I do have on there um, and I just love to be able to share my passion with others. Well, I definitely enjoy your content. I hope you continue to do it Good, for a long you. time. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, and I think your passion nearly comes out through your videos, which I think is really, Good. is great, which Good. I think is why I like them and everyone mm-hmm. else does. So I suppose thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. To no, thank you. Sorry I was late. Us. I mean, oh, there's no me problem. talking about being punctual and then <laughs> here I am 30 minutes late. Um, oh, well, we're, all we're all human. <laughs> yes, that's it. You're relatable. I was avoiding burnout. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, James. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another great episode of Proven Performance. If you're keen to learn more about nutrition and gain CPD points, why not sign up to our Optimum Nutrition for Health and Performance course? Just go to learning.optimumnutrition.com and sign up and start learning today. And to watch or listen to this episode of Proven Performance or previous episodes, check them out on optimumnutrition.com or on our Optimum Nutrition YouTube channel.